All right, welcome back everybody. It is Saturday morning here at Hangar 8, uh, Hangar 8 Media. And as you know, we left off Thursday night draining the oil out of Archie. Well, it's Saturday morning, so it's had two days to drain. And uh, we're gonna wrap up, we're gonna button it back up, put the oil filter on, safety wire it to the airplane, fill it back up with oil, double check everything. Uh, we'll actually ground test it before we put the cowling on. That way I can see if there's any oil leaks or any problems. Put the cowling on and then I will go fly it by myself to make sure everything's good to go. Before we get started, a few things. I want to apologize. I broke one of my very own rules. I did not have safety glasses on Thursday when I was working on Archie. I always have safety glasses on. I always follow safety rules. Always make sure you've got the correct PPE or personal protective equipment for the job that you're doing. And this, I should have had safety glasses. So I apologize. Please don't follow my role on that. But do always wear safety glasses and anything else you need to keep yourself safe. So we got our equipment, which is our, our products, our oil, and our filter. Aircraft Spruce is one of my favorite distributors. They actually have their east coast is based out of Atlanta, uh, south of Atlanta. Well, we're north of Atlanta, so I have two options if I have time. Go fly down to Falcon Field and uh, go over to Aircraft Spruce and pick up any equipment or parts that we need. Or I can order it off their website, as you can see what I'm doing here. Just go to their website, I can put the oil into the cart, and I'll put the filter into the cart. And we'll go ahead and order it. And if I order something, it's usually on my doorstep the next day. Uh, it's ground ship straight from uh, Peachtree City up to Gainesville, and it's next day. So we'll open our box up, Aircraft Spruce, and I'm going to show you what we ordered and why. And there's some new stuff I want to talk about with the oil filters. And here's our Tempest oil filter. All right, so we've unpacked our oil and our oil filter, and I'm gonna go into a little bit of explanation on our oil filter. I use Tempest brand oil filters, love their products. And one of the reasons why is their oil filters actually have a magnet inside. So if there's any metallic uh, particles flowing through your engine, the filter's gonna catch it and the magnet's gonna hold it inside. So that's one of the bonuses. And we can see that on their website where they advertise some of the features of their products. Now something cool is they have a new filter and as you can see on here and also on the website, it's a Spin Ease oil filter. Now this is uh, new in the last couple of months because the last time I changed oil, they did not have this filter out. We still used one of the original filters. Now the part numbers are still the same. The difference is, is with the original filters that Tempest was making, and typically with any other brand, is you have to use some type of compound on the seal or the gasket. And what they recommend is this Dow Corning. And this is a uh, number four. And you can buy a tube of this, it'll pretty much last you a lifetime unless you're a maintenance facility. But with the new Spin Ease from Tempest, they're saying in their documentation, I've got it printed out here. I'll also show you here on the website. I've downloaded both of them in PDF format. But you can see that they say you don't need the Dow Corning uh, compound anymore. The new Spin Ease filters, uh, the way they design these, it's easy install and easy removal uh, without using the compound. So that's what we've got now. We've got the new Spin Ease. Let's open it up and see if it looks any different. Ah, it's nice. We've got new instructions here. I'll read those in a second. Make sure we understand everything. And if I look at the filter, Compare the two, they're still the same part numbers. So we've got the product bulletin that came in the oil filter uh, box and basically this says that their new seals are already pre-treated. Uh, it's a proprietary formula but not to use any extra type of gasket sealer. So this makes life much easier. So first thing we're going to do, re-inspect where our oil filter is installed and we're going to install our oil filter. So watch along. Okay so for install we'll need our oil filter. We'll need a wrench for our oil filter. We'll need our safety wire pliers and obviously a spool of safety wires. So let's get started. 
All right, so we're going to inspect the oil filter adapter on the engine, make sure we're still good and clean. I had some rags up under just to catch any residual drip or drainage. Everything looks good, everything looks clean. No foreign particles. Got our new filter. Take the safety cap off, or the protective cap. Make sure that it's clean, everything looks good, there's no defects. And real quick, I almost forgot, we need to fill out our information, which is our date, tag time, aircraft registration, and then the engine will write our hops in there. So let me do that real quick. got all of our information labeled on our oil filter so we know when we changed it last. Let's go ahead and install and we will come back and torque this correctly. It's tightened, it's torqued, we've double checked everything, now we're going to safety wire the filter onto the engine. So when you safety wire the oil filter has these little tabs on the back and you want to always pull it like you're tightening the oil filter. You don't want a safety wire in a direction that it's actually trying to pull it loose. Once again, safety wire, you can buy this at Aircraft Spruce, the uh, safety wire pliers. If you're great at it, you don't have to have specialized pliers. I've seen guys use duckbill pliers, but uh, I'm not an expert, so I buy the safety wire pliers. I think safety wiring is more of an art and a talent some of us can do it and it looks okay, it works, it's safe. Some of us can do it <clears throat> and it looks like just a perfection. All right, so I'm gonna use the GoPro camera and we'll try to show, but right here on the back of the engine casing, there is a small tab with a hole drilled in it. That's what we're gonna attach to. And as you can see, I attach down here towards the bottom of the filter, that way it's pulling the filter up and in a tightening direction. So the first thing is we want to position it, how it's gonna be in the airplane. And we need to measure how much wire we need. So about right here, it's gonna be our length. We're gonna clamp our pliers onto it. Let's have an auto lock and then we're just gonna spin it. So I've got way too much safety wire here to work with. Let's shorten this, makes it a little easier. I'm sure there's some videos on how to do this quicker, easier, and if there's not, maybe we'll create one. All right, we had our length just right where we twisted the safety wire. Now we're going to run it in through that tab. Okay, now I've got it through the tab, and I'm actually pulling it tight, so we'll go ahead and wrap it around a few times and we'll tighten it up real good. All right, so we got a few spins on our safety wire, and once again, we'll go ahead and spin it again on the back side, and then we're going to cut it. So right now what I've got is it's already attached to the tab on the engine block, and I've got about two to three inches hanging off. Cut our safety wire off from excess, and make sure that we bend this back so we're not poking any wires to fray them. Also, we're not poking anybody that works on the airplane. Uh, doesn't make mechanics happy if they're getting poked by safety wires. So sort of just bend it back on itself and squeeze it tight. You want everything under your cowling to be nice and clean. That way, if there's any issues, you can spot them real quick. And an airplane engine is a lot easier to work on than a car engine. Cars, if they leak any oil or any type of liquids, it's going to pick up grime and stuff from the road, whereas airplanes are flying in pretty clean air. You're not going to have all that grime. It's just going to be grime from its own engine or own deposits. Now we're going to go ahead and remove our tubing, uh, drain tubing. And as you can see inside here with the GoPro, just pull it off. Pull it out of the bottom of the cow in here and go store it where it's nice and clean. We got some bags and then we'll also, like I said, we always recycle the oil. There's a nice recycle bin here at the airport. Always ask around. Don't just dump it somewhere. Be environmentally friendly and properly dispose of the oil. We're double checking that our drain port is in the locked position or closed position. 
And we're gonna start adding oil in. And what I'll do is I'll add some oil and come back and double check, make sure there's no oil coming out. That way we're not wasting new oil. Dipstick out, make sure that our funnel is nice and clean, no contaminants. And see one of our friends has got a nice J3 over there. He's fueling up. My father-in-law, cameraman for the day, George. <laughs> George is asking, which is better, the J3 Cub or the Archer? And the answer is, they both are. It depends on your mission. So if you're thinking about buying an airplane or getting into aviation, you got to look on the mission. What is the mission? You just want to buzz around and fly slow and low, then the J3 Cub's great. You take one person up for you, uh, up for a ride, you keep the doors open, you take off and land in little short grass runways. You want to go somewhere fairly decent distance and you want to haul some passengers, Pipe Archer works great. I can pack my family, a generator, a tent, food, sleeping bags, and we can go to Triple Tree and camp in Archer. All right, so dipsticks removed, adding oil. I abandoned the use of the funnel just because it's so slow. 100 weight oil pretty thick. Actually, it's SA850. So pumping it through the funnel. It's taking a little long. We're saving our containers. They'll go home to the recycle bin. Once again, environmentally friendly. Yep, I'll put one cord in. Yeah. So we're going to go around and we're going to double check. Make sure nothing's coming out our drain and it's clean. We'll continue on. Like I said, six and a half. If we need it, we'll add seven. And show six and a half quarts. We'll ground run it real quick with the cowling off, make sure we don't have any leaks. And then we put the cowling on, fill out all the proper paperwork so we are FAA compliant. And then we can go test fly. Clear prop. See, oil pressure immediately came up. And we're going to let our oil temp come up. is complete. We'll do our test flight, fill out our FAA paperwork, log books for the uh, engine, and I'll show you how that's done. 